Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're outside the Aviva here after Republic of Ireland 1, Serbia 1. Uh, we're just going to do a quick player ratings here. I'm joined by Jair, obviously. Uh, we'll start off with Gavin Bazzioni, the man of the match. I mean, personally for me, you couldn't go much more than an 8, really. He was fantastic. Made a couple of saves to keep us in that as well. And eventually we got a point from it. I think you can go more than an 8 for me. I think you'll have to give him a 9 out of 10 tonight. Paul said there on Wednesday night that he probably had his best performance for Ireland against Borsco, but I think he topped it tonight. Like, the only reason we've come away from this game with a point is because of Gav. Like, he made a couple of good saves in the first half. I think he will be disappointed with the goal because he got something to it. I thought initially it looked like he kept it out, but I just think the power of the header had it off. But the second half, he just made some unbelievable saves. You know, those fingertips, full stretch, out with his feet, like similar to the save he made later on against Abish Azure by Jan. I just thought it was fantastic. And I think I was I thought it was fishing as well that like our goal came from a ball that he played out that Mark Doherty won and led to us. I just thought he was fantastic. Like you'd seriously quite I know he's still only nineteen, a long way to go. Both people have longevity. But you question how he's not at a higher level than League One. He is a fantastic prospect and I think he's got a great future ahead of him in a green shirt. I just feel sorry for Queen Keller because already it looks like barring injury, he's going to play in second fiddle. Fantastic performance against the Cabin tonight. For me it's a nine out of ten. Yeah, and I've heard a couple of things about people are already tipping him to be Man City's next goalkeeper once Ederson moves on, but obviously he's still very young as well. So, you yeah, know, he's only 27. He's, exactly, minutes, so. so there's a long time left for that. Uh, we'll move on into the back three. I'll start off with Andrew Omobam and Dele. Um, I thought he was good, I thought he was solid. He moved the ball a lot more than maybe the other two centre halves did. They're not as much ball players as he might, might yeah. be, maybe. But uh, look, his shot at the end nearly went in, it was flying into that. It's flying into the net, really. I'm going to give a 7 out of that, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you as well. I think I might go 7.5. I think, as you mentioned, he could have been the hero at the end. For an unbelievable effort towards the end. Really urged on by the crowd to go for the shot. There was one little mistake early on where he kind of got the ball back to Duffy. Now, I think Duffy could have done better with control and led for a chance then. And again, Gavin came out now and then and made a good save. But as you say, he looked really kind of comfortable in the ball. He was always kind of looking around himself when the ball came back to him. That he kind of maybe could you know, play a little bit of step over, steal the yard himself. Look more comfortable came out with a couple of good blocks as well, a couple of good interceptions. You have to say, like you know, for someone who hadn't played a cap for Ireland to come in and against two high caliber opposition who both teams would quite possibly could be going to Qatar next year. He's done really well, and I hope Daniel Farkner is watching because I think he can do something for Norwich and get an opportunity there. So for me, 7.5 but overall, very good week for Andrew. Yeah, definitely, and look, fantastic, fantastic tonight as well. We move on to Shane Duffy. Um, personally, I think he probably could have used the ball a bit more. He was kind of static when he did get the ball a couple of times. He probably could have drove on a bit more like Andrew did, maybe a little bit. That's probably what I was asking for, really. I'm going to go 6.5. Yeah, I'd probably go the same as well. I think Shane could kind of fit a similar description to a lot of players. Like a lot of time when he got the ball, it was just kind of a lot of lateral passes back and forth across with no real pace to it across our six yard box. Again, as you say, there could have been a bit more urgency, a bit more kind of tempo to him. But look, from a defensive kind of point of view, I don't think he kind of overly falls him. I think he was heavily involved as well uh, in that kind of, you know, ping pong that led to the goal. He almost stores as well himself. He could have been a hero towards the end. I thought he'd done quite well. I really kind of like the relationship himself and Gavin Bazuno have. Every time Gavin gets down and makes a save, he's always there to kind of really encourage him and let him know how well he kind of done. I love to see that from a kind of captain to a younger player, especially the goalkeeper as well. But, um, yeah, again, I think you'd still say Shane Duffy overall, you'd have to say brilliant performance against Portugal, got the goal against Adam Shan. Probably not his best performance tonight, but still not a bad week from him. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it was 6.5, you said? 6.5. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd go the same myself. Yeah, move on to John Egan as well. Personally, I thought it was quite similar to Shane Duffy. Bit static at times, but good defending, solid as usual. 6.5 again. Yeah, I'd probably go for a 7 for John. I thought first half he was kind of fairly well. I thought the second half he just kind of maybe seemed to struggle a little bit kind of with the pace. Which is unusual considering that he's played a lot of games with Sheffield United this season. He's not one of them that would have been struggling for match fitness. But again, I thought early on for leadership, he looked kind of really good and kind of really strong. Look, defensively in general, we kind of were fairly stretched tonight. The fact that our goalkeeper was man of the match and made a, top, a lot of top saves kind of says a lot. But I thought he was maybe just a little bit more tuned in defensively than Shane tonight. Similar on the ball as well with Graham, but could have maybe done more to kind of get the tempo and the urgency kind of going. But I'll go slightly higher and give him a seven. Yeah, Grant. We'll move into it. We'll start with the wing backs first. We'll start with Matt Doherty. Um, first, I thought he was involved a lot, but maybe the same as Saturday. Probably not enough, really, knowing the caliber of player that he can be. I'd probably go 6.5 as well again. I mean, I think that was a pretty static performance for a lot of it from a lot of yeah. them, to be honest. I, I got a bit confused early on when I seen the number two, and I was like, I thought Seamus Coleman went through a lot of this, but I've seen obviously there a couple of. Uh, Changing the squad numbers, obviously Alan Brown with seven as well. Yeah, I thought he started off kind of okay 
then drift away. But I thought in fairness from towards the end, he kind of kind of stood up. It was obviously, I think it was his cross that led to the, the goal. Obviously, we know it was very, very fortunate, but we'll take it. Maybe it was the break that we kind of needed. But again, I think it kind of looked look for a bit more. It was a couple of times we were making a break and we are looking for that over kind of lap and run, and he just maybe wasn't quite kind of at it. Again, maybe was it the case of the combination of the illness and the last of match fitness. But overall, in general, it was kind of a solid kind of okay display from him. You might say that he kind of done well in terms of like closing down pressure. They didn't seem to get as much joy on that side as opposed to the left, but I'll give Matt a six. Yeah, we move across to uh, James McLean on the left hand side. Again, where I was, was getting a lot of stick from the fans, probably because they were close to him. Uh, tough going, but look, I think maybe a six is probably standard. I, I just think it's 110% effort on the time, but he's just lacking that little bit of quality the last while. I'll actually give James a seven. I might be a little bit more generous tonight, because I thought actually the longer the game went on, especially in the second half, I actually thought he really improved and really grew into it. Like, he actually took on his man a couple of times and bet him and gained a kind of couple of yards and then had a little bit of space from him. I actually thought some of his delivery tonight was actually quite good. Now you might say, oh, it's the usual hit and hope. But a couple of times he actually whipped a couple of good balls in the first half. It got as far as the back post. And maybe if you know a bit more luck of Adam either got on there or someone else was there. He whipped one really good one in in the second half to Adam Brown, back post. And Adam yeah. unmarked, bad touch, let me down. Like, I actually thought some of his set place and delivery was good. Like I said, he kind of took a little bit more initiative to the Serbian fullbacks and gained a couple of yards. Defensively, I still thought he was a little bit suspect. I still thought Serbia in that first half got a lot of joy down his side. I still thought he was a little bit kind of loose. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in the sense that I thought he was better from an offensive point of view in the second half. So I'll give him a seven. Yeah, grand. We'll move on to the two uh, kind of holding midfielders, maybe whatever way you want to describe them. Uh, Josh Cunningham and Jeff Hendrick. Start off with Josh. Um, thought he was a lot quieter tonight than maybe the first two games. He did move the ball a lot. That's what he's there to do. I'd go a six, really. But I thought Jeff Hendrick is probably one of the better games he's had in a long while, really, to be honest, particularly the first half. He made the only one thing I remember, he put the ball out one time in the first half, but he was good overall. He was the main player for Ireland. I'd go for a six for Josh Cullen and maybe 6.57 for Jeff. I'm going to go 5.5 for Josh Cullen and 6.5 for Jeff Hendrick. I was actually disappointed with Josh tonight. Maybe it's because I've slightly more higher expectations from him. Like I said on the final word show on Sunday, I actually probably thought he was our man of the match on Sunday. I was disappointed in him tonight. I thought he started off okay, but just the longer the game went on, just it just wasn't happening for tonight for whatever reason. It just wasn't his usual kind of maybe consistent self kind of on the ball. Jeff, I thought first half was definitely our standout midfielder. I was possibly one of our standout players. He really kind of looking for things, trying to make things happen and probably looked at our standout player, but he definitely faded off. I felt badly towards the second half. There was a couple of balls, no excuses, no one around him. He put the balls out for throw ins, and at one particular time, he put the ball out for throw ins. I seen the bench look and told Cara, Connor her hand to warm up, and I knew his day and his number was up. It was disappointing. You expect more from, in general, look, maybe we expect more from Jeff in general, but I still thought, as you say, first half, probably a standout player, but I felt second half was disappointing, so that's why he probably drops down to a 6.5 for me. Yeah, grand. We'll move on to maybe the, the two midfielders who maybe a bit more forward then, Alan Brown and Jamie McGrath. Um, I thought Brown was very involved in the first half. Darty was giving him a lot of the ball on that side. Uh, he had that opportunity where his touch was a bit loose in the second half from James McLean's cross, but it actually wasn't a bad cross, really. Uh, personally, I'd go maybe a 5.5 for Alan because he did go off early in the second half as well. Jamie McGrath, again, I didn't really think he was involved. OK, he got the assist in Portugal on Wednesday, but it was kind of similar to that. He kind of went out of it after that. Um, personally, I'd go 5.5 for the both of them. Maybe they're a bit quiet. Uh, to show there's no bias in with a surname, but I'm being serious here, I actually thought Alan Brown was very poor tonight. I thought he just looked... He just didn't look at it, and he just didn't even seem to kind of risk if he really kind of wants to get into the game. I've seen the lads a couple of half time. I wouldn't be surprised if we got taken off half time. He just his touch was kind of a little bit poor. Even as mentioned that one in the second half, just I didn't think he was off himself kind of enough. Didn't think he was kind of involved, and I was really kind of disappointed. Um, well, I'm like I was expected more from tonight. Like I know. He had the COVID thing, but I don't think he actually was involved in COVID in terms of he had it himself. I know he was a close contact, but no, I was disappointed with Adam tonight. I'm actually going to go, it might seem a bit harsh, but I'm going to go as low as a 4.5. Jim McGrath, thought he started off well, started, started off fine, made a couple of, good, couple of good passes. But I think maybe just towards the end, kind of the second half wore on, maybe just a combination of the fact that, you know, three games, of this, two games in the space of six days of this intensity compared to what we're used to at St. Mary and didn't kind of quite maybe just work out for him but Gevel is all tried his best couldn't kind of fault him but um, probably because of that I'll probably be accused of being a bit kind of favouritism from I'll give him a six 
And uh, we had Adam Ida up top again. He played the majority of that game as well. He's played the majority of all the games in these, so he must be lacking. Um, I thought he was impressive again. He holds up the ball well. Maybe he's just lacking that tiny bit of end product. But uh, look, I'm going to give him a 6.5 or 7. I thought he was okay again. Same as Saturday, same as Wednesday again. Yeah, I'll give him a 6. I think it was a, it was a tough night for him. The first half, like, there was a couple of put crosses St. James were playing. There was maybe... A little bit unfortunate not to get on to it. I thought the second half he just looked a tired, tired lad. He just wasn't at the kind of pace of the game. He took that yard or two off and he was struggling. Look, it was tough and a lot of time it was long hopeless ball up and he was up against two Serbian centre backs and it was tough and it was difficult for him. But in fairness, him, there was a large part of the second half where he was struggling, but he won a free first then at one stage in the second half where he came out and shot shot for it, which was good and kind of encouraging to see that he still has that kind of good kind of attitude and mindset. But I've seen something even prior to tonight. He's nine caps for Ireland. He's played more minutes than 31 league appearances for Norwich. So that still kind of shows you where he's at in terms of his game development. But as you say, I think six days, three games in six days for his for young guy, I thought he really kind of looked correct at the end. But as I said, he still kind of kept going until he got called to shore. So I'll give him six. Yeah, and uh, we had a couple of substitutions on as well. I don't think we can mention all of them really, but two in particular for me. Uh, Jason Malumbi, I know he came on very late, but when he did come on, he was very energetic again, like how he started on Saturday. And I thought there was one bit of play in particular, which we were crying out for all night, where he won the ball at the back, got it out to the wing, got it moving. I'm going to give him a 6.5 off that. And I think Callum Robinson, he was the longest substitute on as well, came on for uh, Adam Brown after that too. Uh, I thought he'd done okay, but again, he wasn't really in it. And maybe the COVID after effects are affecting him as well. I know, obviously, maybe he didn't. He only had it, he wasn't sick, but he did have to isolate, and that does take a lot out of you as well. So maybe I'd go 5.5 for that. Who was that you were saying? Callum Robinson. Oh, yeah, well, he obviously had it, so I think he probably was maybe feeling some effects. Like he, he met, cleared to see him, Kenny, on Saturday. They said he wasn't feeling physically up to start. I actually would have thrown him in and started tonight, but I was disappointed enough when he came on. I don't think he really had that kind of impact off a bench that you would have been looking for from an attacking player when you're a 1-0 down. I agree with you, I think Alan, sorry, Jason Malumbi, I would think he probably was our most influential sub when he came on, like I said, he kind of looked to make that kind of drive and run, make things happen. Now, there was one or two times he kind of lost the ball, touched them down, and he's still a little bit rash, but I just think that's just the way that Jason kind of is, but he certainly threw himself about um, a lot for me. I thought Darren Horgan didn't really do a lot when he kind of came on, never even really made an angle for himself. Made an option. He was always kind of coming too short towards James McLean, where it just as well off not to pass him because you're not gaining anything from it. Didn't he? You normally get a bit of a burst of energy from for 10 or 15 minutes when he comes on. We didn't even kind of get that tonight. James Collins, I think you kind of know what you're going to get from him when he comes on. He'll kind of be a physical presence in the box and try and hold up. And he did kind of okay in that, but wasn't really on kind of long enough to um, affect things. I suppose it's hard to go through player ratings for each. You'd probably give Malumbi maybe a 5.5 for the length of the time he was on the pitch. I'd probably only give maybe the likes of Darren Horgan, Callum Robinson and James Collins maybe a 4 or 4.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, anyway, we've gone through all the players there. What were your thoughts on the players and give your player ratings in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching, guys. And thanks, Jerry as well. All right, Bob.